Now, from the very beginning of this horror, I have said I believe the attack involved not just the killers run by Osama bin Laden, but also some foreign nations. Researcher Lori Milroy agrees with me and joins us now from Washington. Mr. Milroy is the author of the book, Study of Revenge, Saddam Hussein's Unfinished War Against America. Do you have any evidence, Ms. Milroy, that Saddam Hussein is involved in the World Trade Center and Pentagon attacks? No, it's... I mean, the investigation is, is in its early stages, and certainly I'm not privy to the information that's coming out. But I think um, there are things that suggest it. First of all, as, as you said earlier, there's a very big thing. It's something more than an individual. It looks to be uh, some party with the, the capabilities of a state. I think it's also important that people understand that Saddam Hussein was behind the bombing of the World Trade Center in 1993. All right, let me stop you there. What exactly was his role in the 93 bombing? But by Saddam Hussein, I mean an Iraqi intelligence agent by the name of Ramzi Ahmed Yusuf, or that's what he's called. He's the acknowledged mastermind of the bomb, and he's worked for Iraqi intelligence. All right. So. Did he work for Iraqi intelligence? Was he on their payroll when that bombing occurred, or was he a former guy? No, he was on their payroll, and he was doing it on their behalf. All right. Now, if you know that, why didn't our government take action against Saddam Hussein at that juncture? Well, that's what New York FBI believed at the time, and I think the answer to why didn't our government take action, it was the Clinton administration. And Clinton believed, as, as I, it seems to me, because I did a lot of inquiry into this, that when he hit Iraqi intelligence headquarters in June of 1993, said it was for the attempt to kill George Bush, he also believed that it would take care of the Trade Center bombing, that it would take care of all further acts of terrorism, because Saddam would see that the United States could hit any building on the face of the planet, and so he should not engage in terrorism against the U.S. So he figured he'd intimidate Saddam Hussein, but of course that doesn't seem to be clear thinking because, you know, we beat this guy in a war and destroyed his country's infrastructure and that didn't intimidate him. What, what worries me now, and I think what the central uh, issue is when we get beyond the, uh, the actual terrorism that struck us, is that Saddam Hussein um, supposedly has bacterial, biological, and maybe even nuclear weapons at his disposal. Do you believe he has those things? He absolutely does. You are stating accurately what the uh, international weapons inspectors said and continue to say, and particularly now absent those inspectors. We don't know what Saddam is doing. We can reasonably assume that he is making those weapons um, better, more lethal, and that is extremely dangerous. All right. So because we don't have any inspectors now, he threw them out, and that's why the embargo stands. There have been a lot of countries who have broken that embargo. Um, Germany, for example, has broken it and, uh, and some provided things for him, uh, taken some of the oil and all of that. Do you believe that's going to change now? Is Saddam Hussein, along with Osama bin Laden, going to become pariah because of the attacks on the United States? Well, it would require the U.S. authorities to determine and, and say, we think that Saddam did it. Even if, they, even if they don't have conclusive evidence, I think it's important to say that. And furthermore, I think we've got enough reason to get rid of Saddam, you know, irrespective of lack of evidence regarding this attack. All right, so you sound like you're a person that says, hey, Saddam Hussein should be on the uh, destruction death card right now, along with Osama bin Laden. He should be target number number two, maybe. No, I'd even say target number one because the real uh, the direction and the expertise for these attacks are coming from Iraq. Um, it would be good to get rid of Bin Laden, and I agree completely, but it won't solve the problem. It wouldn't be as meaningful as getting rid of the Saddam Hussein's regime. All right. Well, it might happen that both go, and we hope they do. We thank you very much for joining us, Ms. Milroy.